Today in our daily bread, we're going to be making, well, I'm going to make uh, scallops with orzo, and then we're going to have some uh, salad, a nice salad, light, light salad, and then the last segment, we're going to have a, an apple cheesecake that I'm really looking forward to from one of our guests today. But to begin, orzo. Orzo is an interesting pasta. It's a pasta. It's the shape, and it looks like, almost like grains of rice. Oftentimes, it will be found in soups and things like that. And so that will be the, the base for our, our uh, scallops. It'll be the presentation. And it'll be lemon flavor, and that is going to be great. Now, how are we going to get that lemon flavor? I'm going to, I, I peeled some lemon, and I, I peeled very carefully. I peeled this white pith off as best I could, because we don't want that in. And I've got a skillet back here that is heating up, and I've got some olive oil. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in there. Okay. And I'm going to throw our onions in to start them cooking. Now, there we go, nice. Today in the program, we're going to be talking about youth ministry. And you know, it seems like at least once a year, we do a program on youth ministry. And you might say, well, why are you doing another show on youth ministry? We do a lot of youth ministry shows. Well, for a couple of reasons. Mainly because the youth of our churches are so important to us. They're people we want to listen to, we want to bring into a greater relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to be those people who invite them to be part of the great tradition, the great faith, and really the great relationships that we share with God and with one another. Now, I've got a couple of people who are joining us today. Actually, they are husband and wife, and they're both youth ministers, Jesse Saltarelli and Sarah Saltarelli. So we'll be meeting them a little bit later in the program. But now let's get this, this uh, lemon orzo with scallops going. Now, our onions here are browning slightly, just wilting and slightly browning. I'm throwing in this, this lemon peel. Now, when we get done with this, the lemon peel itself will also be edible. I've got some fresh thyme from my herb garden. And this is always good. If you don't, you can use dry thyme. But actually, some of this is regular thyme and the rest of it is lemon thyme. Very unusual because it really does have a lemony flavor mixed with that thyme. So I'm gonna generously put some, quite a, eh, maybe a couple of tablespoons of thyme in our mixture here. Whoop. All right, now I wanna get this going a little more. Get a little brown there on the bottom of the pan. I don't wanna get too brown, do I? Nope. Now let's put in a little white wine. I like to use, as an all-purpose white wine, an extra dry uh, vermouth. So there's that vermouth. And we can turn up the heat a little bit more to start that simmering. We're gonna put about a, yeah, that's about a half a cup, I'm gonna say in there. We've got about a cup of orzo. You know I'm not good at measuring, but it always works out somehow. There we go. About a cup of orzo, which is going to expand, and about a cup of, uh, of chicken broth. There we go. Get our seasonings going. A touch of salt. And let me give it another stir. So we've got all our orzo covered. And we're gonna just cover that for right now. We're gonna let that go until the orzo is cooked. Some people are more suited to youth ministry, others to liturgical ministry, perhaps others to the ministry of visiting the sick at hospitals or nursing homes. As St. Paul said, you know, we have different gifts but the same spirit. The Spirit is the Holy Spirit of Christ. So to try to make that gift, the Spirit of Christ, alive in others, we try to go out and do what Jesus asked us to do. To announce the good news that the kingdom's at hand. To bring joy instead of uh, despair. To bring hope instead of doubt. You know, to really 
lift people up to make the world a better place because Jesus has touched our lives and we're hoping that others' lives will be touched by him as well. So we've got our uh, orzo going here and it looks really good. It's bubbling along. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Now these are scallops. These were frozen. I've drained them as best I can. You want to get as much water out of them as you possibly can. And I'm even going to roll them around in this dish towel a little bit to dry them even more, okay? Here are our scallops, okay? The scallops are going to get a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, because we're going to season them first, okay? There's our pepper. Here's our salt, just a little tiny, tiny sprinkle. Okay, Oop, there we go. Okay, let me roll them around on this board just a little bit. The salt, the pepper, a little bit of flour, just a tiny bit of flour, just enough to coat them. Because I like to, you know, you could, you could just cook them as they are and get a nice sear on them. But I, I'd like to really, you know, make sure I got a little browning. So I'm gonna put a little bit more, you know, flour on them. There we go, whoop. <laughs> okay, now, we've got this oval cast iron skillet here. So let's, let's give this a shot. Now scallops, especially these small ones, they're, they're only gonna take a couple of minutes at the most, you know? Let's see, I think we're doing good there, okay. When you hear that little sizzle, you know, you can tell it's hot enough. Now let's see how our orzo is doing. There we go. I put a little more liquid in here. It is, it is very starchy, obviously, because it is pasta. And we do want it a little al dente, and it's also a little al dente. And you can see that beautiful yellowish color. That's really the, the lemon. It's very lemony, which I like. Okay. All right. So these have gone for a couple minutes. Let's see where we are on these. I'm just taking a little taste, okay? Mm. First bite, I got a piece of that lemon peel, and you'd be surprised how mild it becomes when it's cooked. So there's our orzo, lemon orzo, with thyme and scallops. And we're gonna share that with our guests near the end of the show. We're gonna come back with some more cooking and some talking about youth ministry right after this break. Welcome back to our Daily Bread. Today I made scallops with lemon orzo. We're gonna be making a salad and then a great apple cheesecake. And Jesse, I understand this uh, cheesecake is actually a recipe that's your, your uh, mother-in-law's, right? Yes, yes. How do you get along with your mother-in-law? Very well, yes. Really? Robin and I get along well. Where did you get the recipe for this simple salad? Is this something you have? Uh, well, the salad's just kind of general, but the, the dressing actually is something that my mom's been using for a number of years. And it, it's real, it is simple. So you got yeah. baby romaine, yep. baby spinach, Yep. Baby tomatoes, mm -hmm. the baby cucumber. No, no, uh, it's a regular baby cucumber. Salad. And uh, and this. Pepper. Uh, yellow pepper. Now, are we we're going to assemble this? Is that kind of the yeah, idea? Yeah, I think okay. so. Good. Uh, do you cook a lot? Not very much, no. Okay. Well, you're not cooking today either, are you? No, not you're really. I wouldn't call this cooking. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Assembling. So. All right, Jesse, you uh, are how old? You're young 20s, in 23. your early 20s, okay. Yeah. You're already married. I am. You are also a, an employee of mine. Yes, <laughs> most importantly. Not of mine, really, yeah. but of the parish here. And you are a youth minister. And what is a youth minister? Well, a youth minister is uh, just that, someone to minister to the youth, but I think more so um, someone in, in the lives of our young people who guides them towards Christ and towards an appreciation, in our case, for uh, the liturgy and especially our Catholic faith. Isn't that really, though, the job of parents to guide their children towards Christ? Yes. So, well... Aren't they the primary teachers? The, in the primary catechists, faith? we would call when them. When they yeah. come to baptism, that's what the priest and Absolutely. the deacon says, right? How do you work with parents, I guess? And do you work with parents? And is that a challenge? And I got a yeah. million questions today. Yeah. How does this all work? Yeah, that's a huge part of youth ministry, I'd think, is working working with parents and especially to, to work with them 
because they, we have to be on the same team. I'm not to take their children from them. It's not a, a drop off, but it's a, a family ministry. And that if uh, our children can get back into their parish and then be effective in their families, that's how youth ministry is most effective. What would you say is the most effective way to bring young people into a deeper relationship with Christ and with the church? What's the best way to do that? I think they need authentic encounters. They need authentic encounters with people who are living out their faith, but also with the richness of the tradition that is our faith at mass and in adoration and in uh, retreat experiences like that where they can really meet Christ in an authentic way. Now, I would imagine that many parents would say, well, that all sounds really good but my kids don't want to go to church on Sunday. And I hear this a lot. It finally, Father, it finally became such a battle. I, we just gave up. You know, you know, we go to church, but the kid, it's, just, it's just too much of a hassle. It's too much of a problem. What do you do about that? Yeah, so I think that's the balance of youth ministry, that we have to be in the culture, into what our teens and our young people are doing, but how that culture is then uh, integrated into our Catholic faith so that Catholicism always works in with the culture that, that is present. That's how it lasted for so long. But um, to be with the teens in the walk and the things that they're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis and bringing those things into our ministry and applying those things and showing them how their faith affects how they live their day-to-day -day lives and it makes it exciting and new. I think our teens and our young people really recognize when someone is being authentic in their faith, uh -huh. and when someone's really trying to, uh, you know, try to be something that they're not. Right. Um, I think I know what you mean by authentic encounter, but how would you describe it to the average person? And how does a young person, a teenager, how do they have an authentic encounter with Christ? Yeah, I think in getting towards authenticity, uh, we need to have that relationship become personal, right? That well, okay, how do you do that? How do, how do young people, how do you bring people to a personal relationship with Christ? Yeah, so through their other relationships that they have with their peers and with uh, myself and some of our other members that are helping out with youth ministry, by living our lives authentically and Christ-centered, that can guide and hopefully lead uh, our youth towards a personal relationship with Christ and that movement of our, our head knowledge, the things that we learn about maybe in uh, religious education or even at, at, at youth nights and things like that, but moving that from just knowledge about God until a relationship with him in our heart. So okay. that's, that's where we become authentic and personal in our relationships. You're gonna make a salad dressing, right? Yes. I, I, let's get, get that going too. Yeah. I'm gonna put some of your cucumbers on top here, okay? And uh, so what do you got there? Oh, you measure, huh? Yeah, I guess. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Yeah, my mom was never really one for measuring, but somehow huh. she made it into, uh, made the recipe out for me, so I appreciate that. That was the olive oil, Yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Is this a tablespoon? That, uh, no, that's that like a teaspoon. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We need, oh. I need tablespoons. Yeah, we'll just make it a lot. It's a couple parts of whatever. There you go. Yeah. That's the olive oil. Now you yeah. got the right amount in there. Yeah. Oh, well, how much are you putting in there? What does the recipe call for? Five tablespoons of olive oil and three of uh, the, the balsamic. Okay. That's about it. You know, it. we could always taste it. Yeah, yeah. Pepper. Oh, yeah. Garlic powder. Garlic Salt. powder. Yeah, mm. just a little bit. Okay. And then to give it a little sweetness, we got some uh, the sugar. There we go. A little bit of sugar, huh? Yeah. What's the matter? I don't know. Huh? I don't know what it's supposed to Can look I like. give you a tip with that? Yes, please. You know, if you really whisk it, it'll, what they call emulsify. See, it's almost really becoming one, so you, you, that's what you want to do. You want to yeah. emulsify the two. Yeah, that, that yeah. looks more that like looks what good. I'm used to. Yeah. Good, good. Ooh, that's a good looking salad. It is a nice looking dressing. Could I take a little taste of it before Absolutely. I was going to wait till oh, our yeah. next guest came oh, on? Your wife. Cucumbers right? are my favorite. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it's perfectly emulsified. Yeah. What's the best way for parents to encourage kids to be part of a youth ministry? Yeah, I think a, a great way to do that is um, I, I really appreciate when parents approach me and and ask and and I get to know kind of where, especially if I don't know their their teen, where that that teen is in their life and what they're looking for and we can work together 
in those ways. Um, but really just, a, I think, verbal and then just encouragement from a parent to say, hey, you know, we, there's something going on at the parish. I think you might enjoy it. Or um, I think the biggest thing for teens especially, too, bring, bring a friend. It doesn't matter where they are or where they go to church or um, if they're a member of the parish or not, but to, to have that kind of little community kind of bringing into the, the larger community of the parish and to, to feel more comfortable. Um, I get a lot of questions from teens if they can bring their friends to certain things, and I always encourage mm -hmm. and try to mention on any kind of invitation that we have that their friends are always welcome to join us. So what do you call this salad? Uh, I would say it's uh, the dressing. Uh, what do you call yes, it? Yes, Sue Ann's salad dressing. Or famous Sue Ann's salad famous dressing. salad dressing. Yep, and, that's my and, mother's name. Well, I, I thought so because you said it was her recipe, right? So, and we're going to be back with more of Jesse's family members, his wife, who's also a youth minister, right after this. Don't go away. More of our daily breads coming up. Welcome back to our Daily Bread where we're talking about youth ministry. And today I made scallops with a lemon pasta, an orzo. And we also have a lovely chef salad with Jesse's mom's famous uh, dressing, salad dressing. And now we're gonna have an apple cheesecake. And Sarah Saltarelli is going to show us how to make that. Right, Sarah? I am. This yeah. is actually my mother's recipe. So oh, it's great. Both it's a family, family show, here. huh? Yep. Mm -hmm. Terrific. I don't often think of uh, cheesecake with apples uh, baked on top. It's going to be baked right in? Is yes, that how it's we'll going to be? Yes, we'll lay it all. The apples will go right on top of the cheesecake Terrific. before we bake it. I'm going to start slicing the apples like you told me to do. All right. Okay. What, do you, what, do you, what else do you need to do well, right we'll away? Well, we'll get started on the crust first. So, um... Well, this is the way I love to help my mom make this when I was a little girl because uh. I would get to put graham crackers in a bag and smash it with a rolling pin. Uh huh. So we're going to put the graham crackers right in the Ziploc. You and Jesse are both youth ministers and you're, you're, you're married about a year. Yeah, yep. about a year now. And uh, I, I'm just thinking that, you know, you're starting out in a married life and you've got all these, you know, these very involved ministries. I mean... What's the biggest challenge to a young couple, would you say, mm. yourselves? Yeah, yeah, very good question. I'd say... One That's of what the, I get paid for. A very good <laughs> question. good questions. Um, I'd say one of the biggest challenges for us personally so far, both working in ministry at two separate parishes, has been just that, working at two separate parishes, um, and feeling the desire as a married couple to want to invest and really be present to one community that we are... Uh, ministering to you and we feel kind of split sometimes between our two parishes but um it's been we've been trying to overcome that and really try to be yes. present in each other's ministries as well so uh -huh. the teens know who jesse's wife is and who sarah's husband is and mm -hmm. so they know that and they see now us you work uh at a, a parish in the diocese of buffalo in I elma do. yes annunciation yes. parish uh and actually, the man that, who's the pastor there is Father Gene Ulrich. Father Gene. And Father Gene was the vocation director. When I first met no with way. the priest, actually, he was the second in command of the vocation department. And wow. he took me out to lunch in 1978, 77 or oh 78. Oh, my goodness. And then just seven years later, I decided yeah, to go in the he seminary. He convinced you. Know. you. Well, <laughs> you know, seven years later. But uh, he's a great, a great guy, a wonderful priest. He and is. what do you find... What, what can priests do to support youth ministers? Two different things. One was to just simply pray for your youth minister and pray with your youth minister and for the teens in the ministry. Um, that's obviously the first step in most things that we do. And the second was to be present at youth ministry events as much as you can, even if you're just stopping in um, to say hello. I know Father Gene is a very busy man. You're a very busy man as a pastor of a parish of this size. And um, Father Gene is very good, though, at stopping in and just bopping into every single one of our youth ministry events to That's say terrific. hello. And yeah. he's in and he's out, but the kids see him and they know him and they know uh, the joy that he shows in his vocation. Oh, being yeah, a priest. he's a very joyful um, guy. It's definitely yep. a huge part. Ryan, on the other hand. <laughs> uh, so what are we going to do with these graham cracker crusts? All right, so we've crunched up the graham cracker. Um, we're going to add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of cinnamon and some melted butter to make our crust. So if you want to put three tablespoons of that in. Okay. 
can use a tablespoon. I know you don't like to measure. No, with baking, you, and you know, this, this stuff you gotta, you gotta be you have accurate. to, don't you? It's true, my mother has trained me to know that much. A half a teaspoon of cinnamon. We're gonna add the melted butter into here then. How much melted butter is this? We got three tablespoons of melted butter. Mm. Um, so we'll mix this up until uh, it's just about combined. And then I think we've got a spring form pan. Usually the, the recipe works best in about a nine inch spring form pan. Using our fingers, we'll just press this into the bottom of our pan. Okay. Just press it down in to make the crust and then we'll go ahead and bake that by itself for about 10 minutes. All right, so while that crust is cooking in the oven, we'll start mixing up the filling for okay. the cake. Okay, great. Um, we need this bowl anymore? We'll need that for the apples. So if you want to toss oh. the apples to the side, you can put them in that bowl. All right. Now we're not worried about the apples turning brown? We are not worried. Okay. So with the apples, we'll go ahead and put in um, a third a cup of sugar and okay. about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. A third of a cup. Do you want a third of a cup? No, no, I got it. <laughs> there we go. A third of a cup of sugar and... Uh -huh. And about a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Great. To this cream cheese, we're gonna add a half a cup of sugar. So if you wanna go ahead and start blending. In a, a what speed like? <laughs> about medium oh. speed. Ease into getting it incorporated. So while you're mixing, we'll add um, two eggs. Two eggs, okay. Oops, so careful. It wouldn't be good if I chopped your finger off. That wouldn't so I'll be, be careful. good, would it? Yes. All right, so two eggs. And while you're still mixing, we'll add about a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. And then once that combined, we're good. What, what other things would you recommend to parents for, you know, to kind of learn a little bit more how to approach the topic of religion with their children. Really, there's a lot out there just on the internet, even if parents want um, to just Google, you know, how do I raise my child in the Catholic faith, like a teenager's yeah. a Catholic, you know, Google these things and see what sort of blogs and parent information comes up. Um, they can also contact their youth minister for extra support. That's why we're here. That's why we have a job is to support youth and, and be informed in the faith, which we want to Obviously, I think Jesse spoke about it a little bit earlier, but to equip parents um, to do that as, as the main teachers of the faith to their kids. I think sometimes we're nervous that kids won't respond well if we talk to them about religion, right. sort of these like taboo mm -hmm. topics that we put religion in a box and God is over here and my family's over here and sports are here and all yeah. these sorts of things, but to recognize that the kids are ready to, to absorb this. They were made for this. Our hearts uh -huh. were made for a relationship with God, right? Mm -hmm. What I found is that we really underestimate, especially middle schoolers and kids that are younger as well, that they're ready and they're hungry and they have questions and um, they can handle the truth of our faith. And some middle schoolers understand the Eucharist better than many adults that I know. Um, so to not hesitate to share the fullness of the faith with the kids, um, I think, do not be afraid to go there mm -hmm. and to be open to answering their questions. And if you don't know something, don't make something up, you know, go right. to your youth minister or to your priest um, or Google it, look it up in the catechism. Uh, start learning alongside of your kids. Mm -hmm. That does wonders in the kid's life as well at, to root them more in that faith if they see, oh, my parent who I respect, whether or not they verbalize that respect to their parents or not, they do respect their parents and mm -hmm. will end up like their parents. Mm -hmm. Um, but to see them involved and engaged and learning um, will teach them to continue to grow. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and our crust, ooh, it looks beautiful, very brown. Ooh, isn't that pretty and nice. Nice. And so, what goes in now? Well, how do we do this? All right, we'll put this in first. You want me to do that? Please. Okay. I'll take this for you. Okay, well. Make so it nice and even. So cream cheese. Cream cheese. Eggs. Eggs and sugar and vanilla. Sugar, vanilla. Pretty simple. Okay, now do I even it out a little bit or not? Yes, go for it. Even it out, okay. make it pretty. All right. Now we get to get a little bit artsy okay. and uh, take these apples mm -hmm. and make them pretty. Fan them out. Okay. So we'll just go all the way around this cake. And then after the apples, what happens? After the apples, we'll toss it in the oven for um, another 
70 to 90 minutes. So just kind of keep an How eye do you know on it. If it's 70 or 90, you just got to keep an eye on it. And if uh, and you, you know pull if it out, gone? if it jiggles just a little bit, you don't want it to not jiggle at all because then it'll be dried out. And then if it's looking pretty good, you'll want to put the pecans on. We've got some chopped pecans over here and you'll just sprinkle that over the top. We don't want to put them on now or they'll burn. They'll burn, um, okay. But we want them to just be roasted, deliciously roasted. And you put it back in the oven for about about 10, 15 10 minutes, more minutes. Because you don't want the pecans to burn. Don't want the pecans to burn, Got but it. you also want the cheesecake to be cooked through. Got it. Are you ready to try some of this? Let's pray Absolutely. first. Father of all love and goodness, we raise our minds, our hearts, our voices to you. We thank you for the gift of youth. We thank you for the gift of years. We thank you for maturity in the faith, and we thank you for all of the questions and the opportunities you give us. Bless the youth ministry of our diocese and wherever our viewers may be. Bless the youth ministry in their places, their homes, their parishes. Hear our prayers and bless this food through Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can get all of our recipes at odbtv.org. And did you know, Sarah, that all of our TV shows are on YouTube at the Daybreak TV channel on YouTube? I did not. Thanks for being on the program today. Thanks right. for watching our Daily Bread, and we'll see you next time on our Daily Bread. Now, today on the program, we're going to be talking really about uh, youth ministry. Do you want to yawn again in my face, Sandy? <laughs> youth ministry, is that tiring? <laughs> I didn't even yawn. You yawned. I, uh...